Hey guys, it's John for Cartridge Blast Gamers here. Today we're doing an unboxing of the PS4 Pro. I got Carmine here today. This is actually his system that he bought. Yes, it is. Yeah, so it's we're gonna system. we're gonna open it up, go through some of the stuff that's in it, and then uh, we're gonna compare it to the other PS4 that uh, we have. So yeah, let's dive in and see what we got. Dive in is appropriate word. Well, <laughs> beneath the box is another box. You always Shocking. Have a box in a box. Oh, okay. <laughs> so technically you get a box for free. Yes. So, so what you'll see here is, first thing we see is instructions or a quick start guide, which nobody actually needs. Don't you agree, John? Okay. Anyway, on to the better stuff. So first thing we're going to pull out here looks like in the actual system. Put this off to the side. Oh, it's cardboard wings. Cardboard wings, yes. Oh. And we're going to take off the actual plastic wrap. Or whatever it is. I don't even know it's plastic wrap. Okay. Plastic wrap. So here you have the PS4 Pro. Now going even deeper into the box. Looks like some of the wires fell out. We have <laughs> it's always good when you're opening a brand new box. I'm just going to actually put everything out on the table, guys, and then I will explain everything in somewhat detail. He's literally putting it all on the table. All on the table. <laughs> Bear with me. Okay. So now we have we have the controller. Shock 4 slightly enhanced. We'll get into that a little bit later. We have the actual power cord for the controller. This terrible, terrible headset. <laughs> this terrible headset here that works great for your phone, not so much for gaming. That's awesome to have in your gaming setup. Yeah, it looks really cool. You're definitely not going to lose that or it's never going to tangle. <laughs> An HDMI cord, and then finally the power cord. The power cord is a little bit bigger than uh, what the actual PS4, the, the original PS4 is. Um, it's actually more similar to like a PS3. Obviously there's a little bit more juice in the system itself, so it's gonna be a little bit more powerful. It's gonna take a little bit more power to actually, or more, a little bit more electricity to generate what you need from the system. Nice. So this is everything here. Um, we have the PS4 Pro right here. This is everything that it actually comes with. Oh, cool. So now the PS4 Pro itself, obviously it's more powerful. It is meant to pretty much up-res games to 4K capable images. Yes. Um, some games are saying will run native 4K, like Bethesda said that Skyrim Remastered will run at 4K native. I don't know how that works because of everything that I've heard is pretty much all up-resing. Right. I'm um, using some technical, uh, te technical uh, abilities far beyond my knowledge. I'm sure you're a smart man, though. You probably know all that stuff. All it right. means is they're going to... Try to push it to 4K, but if it can't go 4K, it's like shooting video in a 4K camera, but then downscaling it to 1080p. So what it's going to do is make it look like a better and faster running 1080p. Gotcha. Um, see, that's why John's here. Um, <laughs> the only reason. But you can see here on the front, um, you have the power button here, which is a lot smaller and really, I don't know small yeah it's just kind of you can definitely overlook it if somebody that doesn't know what they're looking for on a system you're like hey where's the power button um very easy to miss anyway uh you have the eject button on the other side and then you have two usb ports on the front and thankfully on the back they were actually lovely enough to add a third usb port now the third usb port wasn't on the original ps4 for whatever reason I don't know, cut costs, whatever the case may be. Um, the idea behind the, la the port on the back though is, is so that um, the PSVR actually requires you to have a USB oh, okay. uh, wire. Um, so the idea is instead of having these wires coming from the front and going to the back of the system, right. you actually have the USB on the back. Now, I don't have PSVR, I'm not huge, I, don't, I just don't really find a reason to have it right now. Right. Um, still very new. So like with me, like I'll use my gold headset and I'll actually plug it into the back there. Okay. Um, the little USB dongle. Uh -huh. So it just sits there and I don't have to worry about like, you know, taking the charge wire out. But you don't want to use this awesome no. piece of no. equipment that no. you can I stick don't. one one butt in one ear and 
I mean, I love being a secret agent and stuff like that, but I just don't know how, uh, I don't know how the thing works. I what just, were I you it. thinking? I hate it. I mean, even Microsoft, they give you the, the at least the over-the-head chat headset it works better than what the, I, anyway. Reasons. Uh, reasons beyond our knowledge. <laughs> Uh, as you can see here, they have the optical port on this PS4 model. Um, they took it out for the Slim. Um, why? Again, I'm assuming it cut costs. PS, uh, the Slim model is just pretty much your pretty much pay to entry um, with the play PlayStation ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, you have the port that you need for the PlayStation uh, camera. Right. Um, and then you have HDMI as always, and then of course your Ethernet port, um, and then the power uh, where the power cord would actually go right there. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much the PS4 Pro um, system-wise. Uh, obviously, it's you know more powerful. You're looking at more than double what uh, teraflops that you had with the original PS4. Right. Um, I think it was the original PS4 was like about uh, 1.2, 1.3. If I'm not mistaken, teraflops. Mm -hmm. This one's over four point. Right. Uh, four points teraflop. <clears throat> so the system overall, uh, a lot more powerful. It allows to do. A little bit more than what we're used to. We'll get into that a little bit towards the end. Okay. Um, but overall, this is what the system is. Voila. Voila. So now with the controller, they made some slight changes. I want to say, um, if we pull in the the Dual Shock from the original PS4, here you can hold the original. Oh, I get to do stuff. Yeah, you get to do stuff. Um, you can see that they went out of their way, and a really big big addition here. They made gray buttons instead of black buttons for the new DualShock. So it just blew my mind. That is crazy. Actually, crazy stuff. the gray ones are from pretty much like the original PS1 yeah, controller. Yeah, very similar. Actually, I have the PS1 controller. And I think that's the reason why they did it. You can even see it with the buttons. This PS1 controllers. Yes. Let's grab the PS1 controllers for example's sake. <laughs> A little bit of nostalgia there. Nice. But you can see that's... I guess I'm assuming that's what they're actually going for. Probably. The, uh, the only other additional... I believe from what I read um, online was that they fixed some of the dead spots in the actual sticks themselves. Okay. Um, and the only other additional feature I saw was when this is actually plugged in, you will actually see this light, you'll see the light bar on the, the bottom here, right. like that, like this you normally here. do, but then you have a light strip up here, so you can actually see, okay. like if you're getting damage, it would turn red. Right, you don't thing. just like see nah. it on your wall, no, you're not no, even no. paying just, attention just to adds, it anyway. Yeah, it just adds a little bit something extra. Um, overall, um, battery life, it's hard to say, because a lot of these controllers are newer, mm -hmm. so we don't know if it's something where, because it's a newer controller, the battery life's better. Um, but from what I said, I, from what they've said, I don't remember them saying anything about increasing the battery life. Right. Um, but as far as the controllers wise, no, no, nothing really too different from the old DualShock. Right. Um, but the the other additional thing is, and we talked about it offline, was that the Dual Shock, the DualShock sticks, were actually it looks like they actually fixed or changed the actual material that the okay. thumbsticks are made out of. Um, like if you feel this, John, can you play, you feel one yeah. one of them. Yeah. Kind of grips a little bit more. It's a little bit different of a material. It feels more plastic versus yeah, the rubber. Like rubber that's going to peel off yeah, eventually. Yeah, and, and that, was one, off. that was one of the big defects that they had when the PS4 first came out. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, very similar. Um, again, this is definitely, from a system standpoint, definitely more of a half measure. Yeah. You figure it's not a full PS5. It's not a... Uh, you know, a, a huge leap forward. It's not a new generation. Right. It's just something that's going to allow you to do 4K streaming. Um, no 4K Blu-ray drive, which was shocking to everybody. Yes. Um, you, you, because Sony. Yes. Kind of. You, you would think. You would think. You would assume. But you know, obviously keeping down costs because they are doubling the power. Um, but it does allow for the 4K streaming, which is a plus. A right. Lot, most most people nowadays do obviously stream yes. more than go out and buy discs. That's so. true. Uh. So that's, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the PS4K, um, as far as this looks, and then... Uh, you want to compare it to the uh, other PS4? Yeah, let's list? do that real quick. Let's get the controllers out. So, right off the bat, it's actually not that much... Bigger. Bigger, yeah. Like, if you guys can see that there, it looks like... You know, from the pictures, you would assume that this was almost double the size, double like that yeah. much, but it's really not that. It's more like a double the size, of like what the Slim actually is. If you take it and you put it on top of the PS4, 
a lot of, I know a lot of people show it that way. <laughs> um, now it's become a PlayStation 5. Yeah, it's a PlayStation 5, maybe a 6. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there's just a little bit more to it. Um, obviously, it has to have the bigger, it's a bigger architecture. It's more powerful, so they have to have a box that can actually hold all that stuff in it. Right. Um, but again, not a huge leap forward. Um, I like the, the emblem up top. Yeah. You guys this, see that up there? That's this, pretty cool. Yeah, I'm glad they kind of went with a matte finish, too. Yeah. I never understood the whole shiny fingerprints. It's, it's if you weren't sure, and yeah. they weren't sure, uh -huh. they didn't want to do a whole gloss like the PS3, so they went with a half and a <laughs> quarter. <laughs> they, went with, they went with a toss-up. Yeah. Somebody at Sony was like, let's just flip the coin and see what happens. Yeah. Actually, you know, it's funny. You mentioned the power buttons yeah. being here and there and well power here but yeah. i would actually find these easier to find than here because when i first where it's like yeah where it's like actually, you kind of like don't even know it's a button because when you turn this on these light up like the whole thing lights yeah. up here and the lights actually move down to this bottom part oh, okay when it's actually on so yeah for because the first time i turned this on i didn't know where the hell there's a power i didn't even think there was a power button i thought it was i was trying to find it i couldn't find it and then i uh eventually found it of course but at least now they kind of separate them a little bit. But, yeah, so that was... That's, that's the comparison. So just final thoughts. Um, reason why I got the PS4 Pro, why I opted to actually go into the upgrade, um, was pretty much... I'm interested in seeing what the developers are actually doing at this point. I was already on the fence because I don't, I don't have a 4K TV. So it's like, oh, Carmine, why are you getting a 4K potential system without a 4K TV? Ideally, it's just it's a little bit more power. Um, when, when, I, when we talked about when uh, I was playing Titanfall, you know, the, the preference and, and frame rate and stuff like that. Right. Some of the developers, what they're doing with Tomb Raider, what they're doing with Shadows of Mordor, uh, what they're doing with Titanfall, is that they're using some of this extra power not only to potentially enhance 4K, but also give you some options from uh, a, a setting standpoint. In regards to something like Tomb Raider, they give you three different options. One that gives you the higher fidelity 1080p, one that gives you the 4K 30, 30 frames per second option, and then you also have the 60 frames per second option at standard 1080p. Right. Um, so that's very interesting to me. Um, the same with Shadows of Mordor, they're up resing it to make it look a little bit prettier, more solid, uh, consistent frame rate. Titanfall, same thing. Mm -hmm. um, they're still 60 frames per second, um, as we talked about, but it is something where you're going to get a consistent frame rate. Right. You're not going to have the same amount of frame rate drops as you would as you're playing multiplayer, which could give you an edge at the end of the day. That's true. Uh, um, and then where PS4 is 900p regularly for Titanfall and Xbox One is 720p, this actually gets you to 1080p Yeah. because of the additional power. And that's interesting. I mean, you talk about that and I mean, 1080p has been the standard for a long time, yeah. so it's, it's kind of saddening to hear that Xbox One and PS4 are still not, you know, mm -hmm. pushing their games like that. You know where it should be. And it does come down to, to um, obviously when you're, when you're making a game from a development standpoint, something like, and I keep going back to Titanfall, this was like the most recent game I've played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> when they have to kind of, they have to kind of optimize. All right, when three or four Titans start dropping in, do you take a shot at? The, the amount of pixels you can put on the screen or the frame rate. Right. And they have to kind of make that choice. Yeah. So that's why a lot of times they'll optimize for the lower uh, the pixel count. Yeah. Um, because they want to make sure that the consistency of the gameplay it, it, it stays throughout your yeah. actual experience. And that so. makes sense. I mean, to be honest, the frame rate, you know, you can tell when it's dropping, obviously, versus 9... 100p versus 1080p yeah. normal. You're not going to notice when everything's going on. Exactly, and you're not going to notice huge leaps and bounds between even 720 and 900, potentially. Yeah. Um, some people will. Some people have an eye for that kind of thing. Does everybody? We don't know. Yeah. Some people may not even be able to kind of uh, determine what 4K is. Right. You know, compared to 1080p. So. Right. Um, future looks bright. They're obviously going full-blown into trying to get 4k out there mm -hmm. um so hopefully you know within the next year or so we'll really start seeing what they can do but i do hope because like i am making an investment in this and i am going to be playing it that you know it's not just for 4k users um um like they said they said that it's not just going to be for anybody that wants 4K right. gaming um because it's going to be up to the developers to decide how they're going to use that extra power right so so basically this is the system for ps4 players that didn't want to spend thousand plus dollars on a PC. 
<laughs> that's the idea. Yeah. That was what their, their, their business decision was, was the matter of they find that within a certain period of the lifespan of a console, more players switch to PC. That was a quote from Sony. Right. Um, so this is what they're actually, this is their plan to try and mm -hmm. alleviate some of that. Mm -hmm. Does it work? I don't know. Buzz that, the buzz that came from the conference when they first announcement, not great. Um, we really won't know until MPD comes out at the end of the month and shows us how many, you know, how, if it's the number one console sold, is it selling right. well. Um, so right now there's a lot of uncertainty about it, but it's still PS4, it still plays all the great games, it you still plays Blu-rays, so you, you, you can now play, um, you know, stream videos at 4K, play games at 4K resolution, so all in all, really great. Um, and like I said, it's not just gonna be for people that have 4K, um, because like I said, the developers are already putting um, different options in place so you can choose how you want to play each game. So hopefully, as we go further into that, more developers actually adopt that method. Yeah, and uh, so I mean, from looking at it now, you know, it's I, I kind of wish they did have that, you know, uh, Ultra Blu-ray disc drive, yeah, as they would call it. Um, but you know, this is kind of the midpoint between whatever Sony wants to come out with next, yeah, and, and trying to compete with things that are coming out now because graphics right. cards are constantly upgrading. The you got Scorpio around the corner. Scorpio's too. right around the uh, corner. That's something I'm personally eyeing because yeah. I don't even have a Xbox One at this moment, but with Scorpio coming out next year and supposedly going to be a lot more powerful. Um, we'll have to see what happens with uh, the PS4 Pro, but I'm glad you brought it here with you today, and I'm, I'm glad you like it, and, you know, I uh, actually can't wait to test it out myself. Yeah. So, I mean, but what do you guys think? Did you guys get it yet? Um, have you, do you know anybody that gets it, or did you even not want to even look at it because, you know, maybe around the corner something else might come out, or you just bought a PS4? Yeah, and that's that's always the inevitable thing. There's always something around the corner. Right. And, you know, and I mean, I half expect with what happened with Scorpio kind of blindsiding Sony, because mm -hmm. um, by the time Scorpio was announced, these things are already being manufactured. Oh, yes. There is nothing that they could do yeah. to change anything about these systems coming out. Right. Um, but there is always something around the corner. Now, if I go, if I hear about you know at E3 this year that oh the PS5 is coming out next year, I'm gonna be a little pissed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's unfortunately that's a gamble that you take with any electronic. Absolutely. Thing. I mean, people buying 4K TVs now, there's yeah. 5K resolution TVs. And you never know; it might be like what Sega Genesis did. They might just come out with a hundred dollar piece that you attach to it somehow, and then there you go. There's your PS5. PS5. So. But you never know, guys. And like I said, uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. But I'm John for Cartridge Blast Gamers. This is Carmine. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> thanks again for bringing your PS4 Pro. And uh, we'll uh, hook it up, test it out. But thanks for watching, guys. And we'll catch you later. Hit us Peace. in the comments, guys. Thanks. This is my baby. There are many like it, but this one is mine.